So if we take a look at the face, you're going to see some weirdness here. I think maybe uh, the this one, these two are pretty good demonstrations of a problem that we have. You're going to see that all the drops are all are all oriented in the same direction. I think that gives a good illustration. They're all vertical and they all face straight out um, towards the viewer. OK, so what we want, though, is we want the drops to be more aligned with the surface. So to better demonstrate what's happening here is I have this arrow object. And it's just uh, the Z axis. It's just an arrow pointing in the Z axis. So what I'm going to do here is to demonstrate precisely what's happening. I'm going to drag this arrow. Oops, I need to pin geometry nodes and then go to the arrow. And then when you drag an object here, it creates an instance for you of that object. OK. And I'm going to, so I can keep my old work here, I'm just going to shift D, instance on points. And I'm going to just duplicate what we have, points. And then I'm going to take the geometry as an instance, no pick instance. And so I'm going to replace um, all the sweat drops on the face with the um, arrows. And so you can see what's happening here. OK, so let me back out. And then let's remove. I have always have a hard time doing this. I think there's a better way to do it, but okay. So remove that. And then we're going to push that ah, in there. And then we're, so it's a little easier to see. Let's make it like 0.8 on scale. Okay. So you can see that everything, and I don't know why it's like this in geometry nodes, but every, all the Z axes are pointing towards the viewer, no matter where it is on the, on the surface of the object, right? Okay, so how can we fix that? We want it. We want it to. Um, we want the the z axis to basically point in the same direction as the normals of wh wherever it is on the surface of the object. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So uh, Shift A, search, and then we look for Euler, and align Euler to vector. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, okay. So what we can do here is so remember we're talking about the z axis here, right? So uh, don't want to see that snipping tool there. Um, so we're going to hit Z. And then we want to take the normal vector from the points and pipe that into here. Cool? All right. And then we're going to take that rotation and then rotate the object from the instance on points. And there we go. Now you can see that Z axis um, pointing in the direction of the normals on the mesh surface. Okay, cool. So let me just go ahead and undo all this. So for the, dem the demonstration of the axes, and then we're gonna keep that here. Then we're gonna pump the instances back into here and we take the rotation and pipe it into there. So now you can see we don't have those random hang, right? We don't have those randomly hanging out vertically on like a curved surface. It's more aligned with the surface of the mesh. And so um, that makes it look much, much, much better. So we still have a couple other problems with this. Um, and let's tackle the next one. As you can see, we have some sweat overlapping with one another, and it's probably not that big of a deal. You're probably not gonna really notice it if it's overlapping, but we can get rid of that, largely. Um, so we go down to distribute points on faces and change random to, I believe that's Poisson disk. Um, and then let's bump up the density max to something like 4,000. So maybe that's a little too much, but hey, this will demonstrate <laughs> um, how we get rid of overlapping um, points. So see this distance min, this, you know, let me zoom in a bit. This distance min will allow us to um, specify a distance, a minimum distance that points have to be away from one another. So let's just kind of see what happens if we do that. Oh, everything's gone. How about let's make it something really small like 0 0.008. Nah, that's not big enough. How about 0 0.008? See, much better still, they're, they're somewhat close for like the chunkier horizontal ones. We can also even make that, let me see if we can get rid of that with the 0 0.02. Okay, so you could do something like that, right? And so now it's distributed much nicer, um, not any crazy overlap or anything like that. Okay, now it's also now easier to see another problem here. You can see that um, the, the sweat drops are kind of, well, not kind of, they're intersecting the eye. Um, and it's little, it looks just a little weird to have sweat drops along like this area right here, right? And maybe we'll see another issue. Yeah, 
and it's stuck up in the nose as well. Uh, I mean, I guess that's okay, uh, but we can work on getting rid of that um, pretty easily. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to um, weight paint mode. And I believe, yes, we already have. Um, so right now the weights we're editing, so we got to our vertex group, it's a sweat vertex group. So in order to get rid of that, we can do brush, subtract, we already have strength at one and weight at one. And so all we have to do, if we don't want um, any sweat to be in a certain area, we can just kind of paint it out, right? I'm not doing such a great job, but you can see, I, yeah, I could even get rid of that little one over there. So in problematic areas and maybe, so like right, the eyebrows would be here. So we don't really want them. We don't want the um, sweat to be intersecting with the hair there, right? Okay, and then just do the other eye really quick. So this is a nice, easy way to have finer grain control over where um, your geometry nodes will place the geometry on the mesh. And we'll just kind of estimate the eyebrow here. And I think that's pretty good there. And then we can try, hopefully, get rid of the one in the nostril. Okay, cool. So typically you'll probably wanna do this with um, parts that have very sharp um, fall off and curvature. Because then, if your if your geometry is too large, it can hang off the um, it can hang off the surface of the geometry. So also get rid of the lips because that's pretty sharp as well. Because we're probably going to end up changing, you know, the seed value and whatnot on the um, on the distribute points on faces. So I think that's pretty pretty decent, right? So now we've been, we've been able to remove the um, sweat from more from places that would look problematic. And you might even want to do it like on the ears, but for now, this is kind of where I'll stop. All right, so we're nearing the end. Um, let's see what it looks like rendered. So let's go to uh, rendered mode and get out of weight paint mode. And uh, let me get rid of the selection. So obviously these, um, these sweat shapes don't have a material yet. So let's give them material. So let's go over here, make it visible, all three. And then I already happen to have a sweat material. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong panel, wrong panel like I always do. Um, I already have one ready right here. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and go through all these and just assign the shapes with that sweat material. Okay, so we'll go over the material in a bit, but now you can see kind of the, the bead showing up on the skin here, right? So it's very easy to see here. And then you can see like the specular highlights over here. Now, if we go take a look at the um, material itself, we go to shader editor right here. And I have, I did this a long time ago. Um, I did a lot of <laughs> looking on the internet to kind of figure out how to do this. So you're gonna see some weirdness here. So what, it, what it's basically boiling down to is a glass BSDF and it's gonna mix with a transparent BSDF. So what's controlling that transparent part is whether it's a shadow ray or as a reflection ray. So I've added some values in here to, to basically if it's a shadow or reflection ray, I, I introduce some random factor to, not random factor, some factor to apply um, to the transparency. So the reason I do this, if you take a look, at, if you take a look, let me um, do this. I'm going to remove the transparent part of it. And now you can see I have, wait, let me double check. Yeah, okay. So now you see I have all this, this is, I guess the redness is probably coming from the subsurface scattering. Um, it just doesn't look very good. So, and, and it's glass. So it's probably, I would imagine, and honestly, yes, I don't know exactly what's happening here, but glass is more of a solid object, whereas liquid is not. And so um, if anyone has any advice on this, definitely I'm open to um, advice here to make this much better. But so that's why I have it, um, have the shadow and the transparency contributing to the transparent contributing to using the transparent BSDF. So it's just a mixed shader between the glass and transparency. Um, and then that's the final output. So here you can see that, but th actually there is kind of a, a downside of this is that kind of if you're viewing directly forward, you're gonna miss some of the, um, the sweat drops, right? But in the end, it, it's much cleaner. It doesn't look as bizarre and you still get that specular highlight. Um, on the drops themselves, and then you can see that um, it, it brings out an actual physical representation of wetness rather than just that base layer 
of um of roughness to you know there's nothing phys there's not there's not like a 3d representation it's just directly applied on the surface of the mesh so that's all i have for this video um you know i i think this can be better um i'm new to geometry nodes actually so this this is actually my first um foray into geometry nodes so if anyone has any advice here to make this much better um i greatly appreciate it um uh, one thing i want to try next is uh doing streaking not not in that way streaking of like having a drop streak along the surface of the mesh and then leaving a trail there and doing it in a rather generic way and believable way. I have not found out how to do that. So if anyone has advice on that, I'd greatly appreciate that as well. So that's all I have for this video and I'll pop up um, final render again. And um, that's it. Thanks for watching.